systems down. Emergency power only. Our Delta operations suspended. Emergency power only. All Delta operations suspended. established. Green, this is Kelly. If you're watching this, you're tougher than I thought. I guess things aren't always what they seem. Plans have changed. Delta Complex 1 has been compromised. You're not safe there. I'm moving to Secure Service Tunnel 1. It's not far Reactor from your position. We'll move it there. Safety procedure orange. This is the audio log of Robert Price, Warning. Delta Operational Reactor Director in charge of personnel, recruitment, Please evaluation, and placement. Assignment of engineers to the lower Delta labs has become almost impossible. In six months, we've gone from a volunteer surplus to a critical deficiency of qualified personnel willing to accept assignment. Increases in both pay and benefits have done little to the situation. 
Through exit interviews as well as the weekly Delta medical brief, it's become apparent to everyone that the rate of sudden and unexplained mental illness is way beyond acceptable levels, even for Mars. They're derogatorily being called sub belts up here, and I have a feeling this attitude will spread to other parts of the UAC. End of plot. This is the audio log of Robert Price, Delta Operational Director in charge of personnel, recruitment, evaluation, and placement. Disciplinary Action Report 40C-8, responding to Mars City Administration request. Delta Labs 1 is currently addressing a problem concerning theft of security equipment. Four members of the security detail assigned to the Delta Labs have been reprimanded with three others under investigation. It seems caches of weapons, armor, and ammo have been discovered in various places throughout the Delta Labs. We've located some of the missing equipment and have information that we hope will lead us to more. I have a team investigating storage room 21D with security code 298, where I've learned stolen items may be located. I hope to recover all items and find all personnel responsible. End of log. Your friends are with me now. Soon, you will join them. Warning. Reactor core offline. Please follow safety procedure, Orange.
offline. Please follow safety procedure, Orange. Attention. Reactor core online.
This is the audio log of medical supervisor Peter Raleigh, dated October 29th, 2145. We have exhausted all known forms of drug treatment in hopes of finding a way to abate this strange outbreak of dementia, and I have yet to receive any additional data from the psychiatrist's battle nerve. Options are quickly dwindling. Approximately 80% of all extraplanar participants exhibit signs of mild neuroses within the first 48 hours after returning from their expeditions. Within 72 hours, 75% of patients exhibit extreme signs of paranoid delusion and violence. We have isolated these cases in hopes of finding the pathogen. As yet, we can find no biological contaminants that would lead to such drastic changes in cognitive processing. It seems that whatever this pathogen is, it attacks higher brain functions and only leaves more basal functions in the lower brain stem. We've witnessed that a high percentage of subjects lose ability for rational thought and communication skills, and then the physical changes become evident. Subjects in this group appear to atrophy. Skin pales, muscles become slack, bone, teeth, and fingernails become almost translucent, veiny sinews of their former selves. I have never seen anything like this in my career. Our Making progress, time. Marine? Your journey is futile. You will die, and your soul will be mine. running again. The areas are destroyed around us, so it's the only way through this part of the complex. You need to find me a working plasma inducer. It's all I need to get the teleporter working. You can look for it in operations. I have a security clearance. I'll unlock some doors for you. There. We don't have a lot of time. Please hurry. Don't have much time. Get that plasma inducer. Quickly! This is the audio log of medical supervisor Peter Raleigh, dated November 1st, 2145. Patient 0432, a private Steve Jensen of the UAC Dark Light Armor Corps Division, expired today at 1543 of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. This is approximately 110 hours after his return from expeditionary mission. Private Jensen was suffering from paranoid delusions and full-blown dementia. Treatment was unsuccessful. He was the last surviving member of his outfit. Four other squad mates, who also came back with Private Jensen, expired from injuries suffered on that last mission shortly after their return. Before his death, Private Jensen was heard screaming in both English and other languages. Something about demon hordes feasting on our souls. The other language was later discovered to be Aramaic. Due to security concerns in the area, I've secured some armaments within my office.
As requested, the following is my initial feedback on my first trip through the portal. Private First Class Frank Cinder, dated October 15th, 2145. I, uh... I don't know exactly where to begin. Obviously, I survived the first trip and feel no worse for the wear. I, I'm not feeling any of the symptoms reported by the others who have gone in before me, but I'm at a point where I'm still trying to process everything. Thankfully, the place looks deserted and devoid of any life, but, uh... Flames and heat and stench of the place. It smells of death, decay, and burnt flesh. Tomorrow, we're going back in with some of the eggheads, um, science division. We start securing forward positions, and we expect to start sending out the mapping drones at the same time. I feel I must admit on a personal note that I, I've, I've got a really, really bad feeling about this. I don't understand what we're doing there or, or, or what we hope to prove. PFC Cinders, signing off. Private Jensen was suffering from paranoid delusions and full-blown dementia. Treatment was unsuccessful. Initial psychiatric interviews suggested only mild psychosis with speech, motor activity and thought processes within normal range, paranoia being the only psychotic element directly evident. Reference interview G8A, Private Steve Jensen, October 18, 2145. UAC psychologist Dr. Hooper interviewing Steve Jensen, male, age 27. <clears throat> Steve, can you talk to me about the last few weeks, please? I don't want to talk. Well, I'm here to help you, Steve. I've tried talking. They think I'm crazy. You think I'm crazy. They, your colleagues, aren't doctors. Let me help you. Help? Nothing can help us. Prior sessions over a period of 72 hours revealed rapid deterioration of both physical and mental capacity, with behavior inconsistent with any known patterns. The patient was responsive for brief periods and had to be restrained during interviews. Reference interview H-3-2, Private Steve Jensen, October 21st, 2145. Tell me what you see, Steve. I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want to feel it. <clears throat> They'll be here soon. And then you'll see it. Can you talk about what you see? <laughs> Steve? Patient unresponsive, terminating interview. We have exhausted all known forms of drug treatment in hopes of finding a way to abate this strange outbreak of dementia, and I have yet to receive any additional data from the psychiatrists back on Earth. Options are quickly dwindling.
Halon systems deactivated. Audio log for Phil Wilson, medical technician, Delta Labs, October 20th, 2145. Today I witnessed the third test of the teleporter in the three weeks that I've been here. Volunteers are becoming harder and harder to come by, and it isn't difficult to see why. They all come back screaming like loons about demons, pools of blood, it's real fire and brimstone stuff. At first I wasn't paying much attention, just doing my job, but... The last was Robert Clayton. Now, I met him my first day here. This guy chews up rocks and spits out gravel. He's tough as they come. Having to sedate him and drag his drooling body to the isolation, this really freaked me out. I'm gonna put him for a transfer as soon as I'm able.
job, we'll get the tele- Order working again. And you don't have much time. You're going to need to teleport across the containment chamber. It's the only way through this part of the complex. Head into the chamber and initiate the sequence on the machine. I'll take care of the rest. I'm not going with you. Good luck. But before you go, I want you to take something. It's a journal I made about the experiments. Uh, those things. It's all there. It'll explain everything. Get it to someone so this never happens again. Get out to the teleporter pad. I'm ready here. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. My name is Ian McCormick. I'm a research specialist stationed on Mars, working for the UAC. My primary job is, or rather was, to assist Dr. Malcolm the Trooper in a variety of experiments, though for the past year we've been focusing almost exclusively on teleportation. I don't know if I'll make it out of here alive, so I'm recording this video long to let someone know what happened. And with that knowledge, prevent it from happening again. Initially, experiments were amazing, were creating a new science, and the prospects of it changing our way of life were, well, they were outstanding. I was proud to be associated with such an amazing project and someone as talented as Dr. Petruger. We noticed early on, well, probably before we had completed maybe a dozen successful tests, that there was a variable delay during the teleportation. The objects are broken down at the quantum level, transported, and then assembled. Each stage of the process should have been instantaneous, but it, it wasn't, and we didn't know why. We sent a video drone through and were shocked at the images sent back. Just a few frames of video right before the drone came back through showed what appeared to be several sets of eyes looking directly at the probe. We had just found a living, breathing creature that was not human. The Truger immediately sent out a request for volunteers. He specifically wanted UAC security force members because he wanted to capture one of these creatures. <sighs> I've made a lot of mistakes, but I am most ashamed of my involvement during the next phase. To get medical clearance to send human subjects through the device, I, I doctored up several of our reports to indicate that we had performed living tissue experiments. I did not regret it at the time, but a few days later when our third test subject came back. He was chewing off his own fingers. It seemed he was clinically insane. He started sending teams in about once every two days. The teams were reporting nightmarish experiences, sightings of things that ultimately made us conclude that the other dimension was not just another dimension. It was hell. And then Petruger, he went through the portal himself. I don't know what he was thinking. It was an unscheduled trip and he just went. And we couldn't stop him. And when he came back, he had changed. He sounded and looked the same, but he just... I don't know, he was just different. And then he did the unthinkable. He took the soul cube, the device that was discovered in the ruins, into the portal. The portal stabilizers just start to fail. And then, living hell erupted into the base. Oh, we were stupid for not destroying the portals as soon as we realized what was on the other side. Oh God, forgive me. I blame myself for my part in this. Please, someone, never let this happen again. I'm sorry, Ian McCormick.
systems activated. Teleportation will commence in T minus three, two, one.
Interesting. Ah, you surprised me. I'm glad to see you. I would have hoped they would have sent more than just one guy, though. I've been studying one of the specimens we brought back, to see if there's something physiological that would be a weakness, a way to stop them. i found nothing so far. Haven't had enough time. I'm gonna stay here and keep looking. It's the only thing I can do. There are combat supplies in the storage cabinet in the next room. The code is 624. I hope you can use it. the Delta Complex Stasis Chambers. This facility was constructed to house and study the extra-dimensional beings, which were recovered during some of the first teleporter tests.
before you is a relic codenamed U1, or simply Soul. Uh, this is the audio log of Research Director Larry Bullman, October 19th, 2145. I've been examining the glyphs on the cube-shaped artifact, which some are calling the Soul Cube, and combined with previous research data, it is my conclusion the device is some sort of weapon. Uh, if the power fluctuations would stop long enough for me to get the linguistic CPU online, then I am sure my theory would be verified. You know, I'll take this opportunity to lodge yet another complaint about the continual power problems. Living in this godforsaken base is bad enough without having to watch the lights flicker constantly. It's just... Well, never mind. Back to the task at hand. What I've deciphered so far is a bit, I must say, disturbing. It seems that when one has possession of the artifact, if one inflicts damage or possibly kills another being, it extracts power from that event somehow. Now, once a certain threshold has been reached, the artifact has the ability to kill anything you attack with it. How you attack with it, I'm frankly not certain, indicating that the artifact is autonomous in some way. To date, I've only deciphered about mm, two-thirds, give or take, of the markings, but my initial glance at the rest of them indicates it harbors some far greater power. As you know, at this time we have not seen any reaction from the cube, and it has withstood any scanning, abrasion, or other test beyond picking it up and examining it. I suspect that just like the civilization that constructed it, its capabilities are diminished to the point of being useful only as a paperweight. And a block.
Welcome to the Delta Complex Stasis Chambers. This facility was constructed to house and study the extra-dimensional beings, which were recovered during some of the first teleporter tests originating from Delta Level 3. While little is known about their native environment, the specimens appear to be carbon-based life forms with extremely high heat tolerances. The epidermal tissue is extremely resilient to abrasion or incision, which has complicated internal studies. Observational studies have shown incredible strength and agility, as well as the ability for some specimens to manifest and control cohesive plasma masses. The method by which these plasma masses are created is yet unknown. It is believed that the specimens possess a rudimentary intelligence and social structure, as was demonstrated during the first tragic expeditions through the portal. While the cost in human life has been great in acquiring these specimens, we hope to one day complete genomic mapping and begin to answer the many questions we have about these entities. What you see before you is a relic codenamed U1, or simply Soul Cube. It was discovered in 2104, located in a geographic region where UAC researchers have unearthed evidence of a long-lost civilization. We know nothing of this civilization other than they existed, and that they were all wiped out in some type of cataclysmic event, according to what we've been able to decode from stone tablets found throughout the ruins. What clues we have been able to piece together reveal a culturally advanced society whose technology can only be described as mystic, as evidenced by Yuan's strange characteristics. Efforts to further examine U1 have been futile. Mass spectrometer and radiation scanning methods have failed to provide reliable identification of the molecular makeup of this artifact. The object cannot be weighed, and in all tests we've been unable to determine its mass. All attempts to physically manipulate or open the artifact have been met with no success. We also have had no success in deciphering the symbols adorning U1. What we do know is that the thermographic readings are constant, unwavering temperature of 98.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Our research continues, and we hope that with continued investment and research, we can, one day soon, learn to exploit the technologies that make up U1.
Destroy him! Decontamination chamber sequence initiated. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. This is the Have personal nice audio log of Dr. Frank Serrano, dated September 19, 2145. I've been brainstorming over the foolish thoughts about achieving sustained, uninterrupted transfers from the teleportation units. Currently, our systems can only build enough of a charge to have the portals open for approximately 10 to 15 seconds. It's enough time to get the team not enough time to send in some of the heavier equipment. Engineering in the Inpro facility informed me that we can theoretically lose the active portal time to 45 seconds quite easily. Please but select this will require rerouting power from central processing. Power requires for system We're sucking power from three veins in Inpro just to power chamber one. I have no idea how we can sustain transfers for longer than 60 seconds without giving serious thought to reorganizing the teleport power grid. I'll sleep on this. This is Dr. Frank Serrano signing off. This is the audio log of Administrative Assistant Han Li, dated October 16, 2145. Why is it that I keep getting the crummy jobs? Armor Corps 1st Platoon and 1st Science Team were completely wiped out this morning on their second excursion. And I am the one charged with writing up the reports and sending this information back to Earth next of kin. Pad 2 selected. So First cup of coffee for the day. The night before, no shower. And I have 20 dead bodies to fill out paperwork on. I haven't seen the actual corpses, but the word coming down from the great fire says that looks like they have been packed up pretty good. This is that everyone on the base spooked. A trooper is nowhere to be found, and there are a lot of questions being asked with no answer. from anyone. Decontamination nice process hire. started. I was suiting up the next outfit with the new BFGs. Sounds like they were taking any chances Complete. on this next trip. Have a nice day. That My patience with you is wearing thin.
Look around you, Marine. Everyone is dead, and soon you will join them. Access granted. Warning. Chamber malfunction. Please select teleport destination. Pad 3 selected.
Decontamination chamber sequence initiated. Decontamination process started. Primary system failure. System shut down. Backup systems online. Stop him! Maintenance personnel needed in chamber three. This is the audio log of Administrative Assistant Han Lee, dated October 20th, 2145. Just when I thought this job couldn't get much worse, it did. Delta scientists sent another group of researchers through the portal two days ago and they failed to return at their scheduled time. Radio transmissions to the research party have gone unanswered. Even our LZ tracking systems can't find them. We fear. Losing lives is one thing, but losing our proprietary technologies is another. The team was equipped with the three. newest BFG Selected. weaponry. We don't know who or what is behind that portal. But until we find out where our guns are, I'm suggesting we suspend operations to the portal. Thank you. End of log. This is the audio log of Dr. Martin Schultz, dated August 7, 2145. We need to amend the operating procedures to ensure that all target three. teleport Select markers it. are properly set and locked before engagements. We had a tragic accident today in Chamber 1 that led to the death of Susan, one of our female chimps. She stepped onto the platform during the calibration phase, an electrical short gauged the system and literally split her in two. Her torso appeared at the destination marker while her lower extremities remained in place on the source pad. I'm not sure how we've gone this long without this problem appearing sooner, but it seems like we've been having nothing but difficulties getting these systems to work. I don't know where Betruger finds the energy. He's been busy slaving away in the labs for 16 hours a day trying to debug these latest problems. What's he trying to do? Make the rest of his working sifts look bad? Regardless, we have our work cut out for us over the next couple of days, going over all the system's logs to see exactly what went wrong with this round of tests. Dr. Martin Schultz signing off, hoping to report better news next time. Pad 1, selected. Making progress, Marine? Your journey is futile. You will die, and your soul will be mine.
You will never find the thing you seek. It is trapped in hell forever. <laughs> <laughs>